changing the structure of your production could be a real problem. Adding additional reps or moving elements around can be very time consuming. Fortunately, fortunately for those of us working in Cubase, Steinberg came up with the Arranger track. Let's take a look at how it works. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Toby Sonics. It is Tuesday the 10th of August 2021. I hope you all had a great weekend and had a chance to get out and about in the fresh air. Let's start with a little bit of a confession. Now I usually try to make my content useful for anyone making music, but this week's episode is going to be specifically about the arranger track in Cubase. So if you're not currently using Cubase or thinking about using it, this video isn't going to be much use to you. If that's the case, then I wish you the very best of days and you should move along and watch something else. Here's what Steinberg has to say about the arranger track. Set up your project in a non-linear fashion by using an arranger track, which allows you to specify how and when specific sections are played back, even in live performances. It means you do not need to move, copy and paste events in the project window. In order to keep things as tangible as possible, we're gonna be breaking open the production for my latest single, All The Little Things. <laughs> Alrighty then, let's get into some of the basics. Right now we're listening to the production for all the little things and we're listening to the structure as it is in the release. You can see the arranger track at the top of the timeline. Right now it's in bypass, so the timeline is playing in its standard linear format. All right, we have our arranger track at the top of the timeline. Now, that's just where I like to put it. You can have it wherever you like. It just makes sense to me to have it up there at the top. If you want to create an arranger track, the way to do it, dead easy. Right click, add track, and go down to arranger. There you go. You can only have one arranger track per timeline. Bear that in mind. You can see that our arranger track is made up of a series of blocks. The way to create that is pretty simple. We just get rid of this one. You're going to press eight on your keyboard and using the drawing option, and we go over and we can label that again as verse one. You can also see the start, end, and length. The collection of boxes is called a chain, and you can access that chain in one of two ways. You can either select the arranger track, and here it is, it's just popped up here, or you can open it in its own window by clicking here. The arranger editor and side panel consist of two halves. On the right hand side or at the bottom on the side panel, we have the arranger events. These are the events or boxes as I like to call them as they appear in the timeline. And then you have the current arranger chain that is here on the left hand side or at the top of the side panel. The arranger track is currently in bypass. To switch the arranger track on, we can either click here or we can click within the editor itself. And you see the little arrow appears here and here. The timeline will now play in the order set down in the current arranger chain. Let's press play and see how that goes. Uh-oh, we just missed out verse one and went straight to the pre-chorus. Why did that happen? Well, because I deleted the original event or box, as I like to call them, and replaced it with a new one, which isn't in the current arranger chain, so it didn't play it. Let's see if we can fix that. Very simple to do. We're gonna take the verse one that we have here in the arranger events as they appear in the timeline, and we're just gonna carry it across and drop it in before the pre-chorus. Let's play it again and check that it's got verse one this time. There you go, our verse is back and all is right with the world. And that is pretty much it. That's pretty much how you use an arranger track. But we won't quite leave it there. Let's just take a deeper dive into some of the other features. Take a look at, take a look at how you create an arranger chain from scratch. First up, we need to create ourselves a new chain. The way we're gonna do that is we're gonna come over here to the plus sign, create new chain. And there you go, we've got a completely empty chain and we can rename it by clicking here and we can call it, let's call it Remix Chain, why not? 
We also have the option to duplicate the current chain and we can trash the current chain. All right, let's say for example that we want to start with the drop. We pick it up and we put it in the arranger train. We've got the second part of the drop where we get the spin down effect, where it slows down like a tape. It's great, but I don't want to get there too quickly. Maybe I want a little bit more of this first drop. I can do that very simply by just using the repeat option. And you can see here now on the counter as well that that's giving me that information. Not only that, it's also showing me the duration of that particular set of events and is showing me the song time as it increases with each event. That's really useful. I really like that. Now, rather than go to the second verse, which is what the song would usually do, let's take the song back to the first pre-chorus. And again, I want to have two versions of that. So I'm going to go for two reps. I can click on the repeat, or if I want, I can simply drag a second event exactly the same and the arranger track will automatically add it. So now I've got two again. Now, let, now let's stick with the order. Let's go to the chorus. I like that idea. And then what we'll do is we'll go to the second drop. Now, because we're going to the second drop, I know for a fact that there's a stop before the second drop after that second chorus, which really nicely bounces it into that second drop. So I'm actually gonna get rid of that first chorus and I'm gonna replace it with a second chorus. The way that I do that is that I'm gonna right click and it says remove touched. There it is, it's gone. I'm gonna take the second chorus and drop it in. Let's have a play through that and see how it works out. Right away, you can hear that the arranger track is doing a great job of allowing you to play with structure, test out ideas without having to get into editing anything or inserting time or duplicating things. It's much quicker and it helps you avoid making any careless, silly mistakes that could throw off your production and frankly drive you completely mad. On the other hand, we did hear two examples of where you can have problems with arranger tracks. The first example was in the pre-chorus and actually kind of worked pretty well and didn't really sound like a problem. That reverse stab that kind of lifts up and acts like a little mini riser going into the chorus. And we heard it both before the chorus, but we also heard it before the second rep of the pre-chorus. It sounded pretty funky like that. So it actually worked. It's not really intended to work that way, but hey, if it works, why not? The second example of it though was more serious and that was when we came to the second drop and the synth and you'll notice that the synth didn't fire right away. Let's take a look at why that happened. First up, I've duplicated our remix chain and then I've edited it to create a simple loop with just the second chorus and the second drop. So if we just got the bit that we're interested in going on right now. And you can hear that each time it loops, we're losing the beginning of that step acid. Let's take a look at why that's happening. Here's our problem. 
the MIDI fires slightly before the beginning of the second drop. What we need to do is we need to line up the second drop with the beginning of the MIDI. So let's give ourselves a little bit more detail here. Let's zoom in. I'm just going to bring the arranged track across and I'm going to shorten the chorus event at the same time. Now, when we use the arranger track, it should play from the beginning of the MIDI trigger. You can hear now that it's playing the MIDI right from the beginning. Right now we're listening to that little mini remix chain and I've taken it and I've created a new project file with it. And I've done that using the arranger. Let's have a look at how I did that. So here we are back in our arranger editor and here's our remix chain that we created. And what we wanna do now is we wanna turn it into its own timeline, into its own project. And the way we go about that is with the flatten chain option. But before we flatten the chain, we need to have a quick look at some of the preferences. You, you see that we've got three sets of preferences. We've got source, destination, and options. Right now, the destination for our flat chain is current project, and that limits our choices to just using the current chain. That's the one we have loaded up in the Ranger editor. And you'll see that it cuts off a couple of extra options here as well. If we choose to create a new project, which is my personal preference, now we get a couple of extra options. We can either stick with the current chain, or we can choose to export all the chains, or we can check the chains that we want. There's our little remix chain copy that I created just for our demo. There's the official version, we don't want that. And there's the remix chain, that's the one we want. Then we have a couple of options of how to name our new project. Use the chain name makes sense to me. And then we have some more options on how the arranged track actually works and what it does once it's finished. Dealing with the second point first, because it's the simplest one, do we want it to open the new project and do we want it to cascade those new projects? Pretty straightforward. Let's have a look at the other options. Keep the arranged track, yes or no? I would keep it, why not? Rename arranger events? Well, you can rename them if you want. I don't see why you would need to. Make real copies. This is kind of a 50-50 for me, this one. And then don't split events. This one's a little bit obscure. This goes to how the arranger track works with MIDI. Remember the problem we have with the sequencer. Now, what it will do in this case, if you tell it to not split events, it will ignore any MIDI before or after a particular event. We don't want that. Now that we've got our setup ready, we can flatten our chain. And that's it. That's how a range of tracks work. They're a great way to streamline your workflow, particularly whilst you're still trying to figure out the structure and you're moving a lot of different things around. They also give you the option of creating alternative versions like radio edits, where you want to create maybe a shorter version, a sort of truncated version. As you can see, it's not a perfect system. You do have to be a little bit careful with those overlaps. The extent to which you want to use the arranged track either in a very basic way, whether you want to get into flattening chains and creating new projects from it and all that, it's entirely up to you. It's a tool that you can use very simply, or it's a tool that you can use on a much deeper level, depending on your workflow. And I think on the whole, that's one of the great strengths of Cubase as a DAW, is it does allow you to work in a number of different ways. If you enjoyed this week's episode, please take a moment to like the video and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out. Thank you for taking the time. If you want to hear today's production in context, all the little things is out right now on all major streaming platforms and Bandcamp. Please have a listen. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And that goes for any of the Toby Sonic productions. And if you have any questions about today's video or any of my other productions, feel free to ask me in the comments below or via social media at Toby Sonics. Thank you so much for watching. And until next Tuesday, good night and good noise. Stay safe and stay healthy. Mm -hmm.